Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this part in learning game maker language from scratch, we are going to be looking at data types. Now, this can be a little confusing at first, so I'm going to do my best to explain it and why they are useful, and then I'm going to give you some examples and explain what we've got on the screen here. The first thing I want to show you is an image, though. This is data types in Java, but it translates over to Game Maker Studio really well as as well. So we have something called primitive data types, which are kind of basic. They are simple, they don't do much, but they are the building blocks to do more advanced things. So you have numeric, which are numbers, you have integers, which are just regular numbers like you're used to, then you have something called floating point, which is when you have a decimal inside of that, okay? And that can be really precise. Basically this is how big that number is and how much memory inside of the computer it's taking. Then you have non-numeric and you can have a character like A or B or a semicolon or you can have a boolean which is a special type of data uh, that we're going to look at. It is a 0 or a 1 which is also translated as true or false. That's all it holds. Then you have non-primitive. These are the ones that have been built upon primitive and have added functionality such as strings, which we have talked about and that we've used. We have arrays. And then the really cool thing is the user defined. You can actually create your own data types inside of Java and other programming languages and inside of GameMaker language. And this allows you to do pretty much anything you want, which is awesome. So let's start with string. This is something that we have used uh, when we typed out our first hello world, we were using a string. Anything inside of quotes is going to be considered a string. Now, you can put whatever characters you want that are alphanumeric inside of there, but in the end of the day, it's going to look at that variable and say, this variable is a collection of characters, which means that you can only do things that make sense for a collection of characters. So, if I had two names here, it wouldn't make any sense for me to be able to go um, new name equals your name plus my name because we don't add names that way it just we don't we don't know what that means this plus symbol when it runs in the game it's going to throw an error other programming languages will look at this and say okay these are two strings they're trying to add them together that's not going to work, and it's going to flag it for you right here. Game Maker Studio is a little more lenient, uh, but it will throw an error as soon as you try to run this because you can't add strings like this. Now, there are ways to do something called concatenation, which is just a fancy term for saying put two strings together, but that requires a special function, a special method that we'll learn about how to use later, but it's not this plus symbol because this plus symbol is literally used for integers which is the next thing we're going to look at. So let's get rid of that because that is not right. Now we have integers, okay? It's numbers, things that you are familiar with. Game Maker Studio, you can just type whatever number you want, uh, and it will it'll work, okay? Uh, it, it knows the difference between floating point, decimal, byte, integer long. It doesn't matter how long your number is, Game Maker language will handle it just fine. And then, with numbers, you can do things that just make sense, okay? So, if I wanted to say plus your age, so new age, so a new variable, is my age plus your age, you can do that. It's going to work just fine. It's going to come out with a reasonable number. You can add, subtract, divide. You can do anything that you can with numbers in math that you can here because the computer is a calculator and it's going to know how to do that. That is numbers. That is integers for you, okay? It's not important that you remember these, but again, I want to familiarize you with them so that when you look in the manual, when you go online, you understand what they are and you're not blindsided by these terms, okay? Then we have Boolean. So... A boolean has two values, true or false. And at first glance, booleans can seem useless. Why would you want this? But they are very useful when you start doing anything that requires checking data to see if it is accurate. So if you're in combat with an enemy, 
one thing you might want to do is say, does this player, does this enemy have any health left? Is their health more than zero? And you, what you would get back is a true or a false. It's a check. It's a boolean. You can also use this for navigating menus that I've used it for. Like, is, is the player in the menu? If they are, well, then pause everything on the screen, you know? Don't have the enemies moving around. Don't have them get into a battle while they're looking at their inventory, and, you know, unless you're in Dark Souls. But it's a boolean that is being checked here. You set it to true when they press start, and when they back out of it, you set it to false. And the game will then do things based on if it's true or if it's false. Booleans are extremely useful, and the more you program, the more you'll see that. At first glance, I remember thinking that they were not useful and that I didn't know how to use them well. And so I'll make sure to give lots of examples about how, to them, how they can be used effectively. And last that we're going to look at is the array. Not the very last data type, because there's a lot more, especially ones that you can make yourself. But the array is very useful, and you will find yourself using it constantly. Now, the array is basically a list. It's a very powerful list, which I'll talk about in a second, but it is a list of whatever you want. Here you can see I am creating an inventory for a player. So here they have a sword, they have a shield, and this number could represent any sort of thing, but it may represent their current health. An array in GameMaker can hold any data type, and it can be basically as long as you want. It is a fantastic tool that has the functionality that can also do things like sort it from least to greatest, greatest to least. You can add more things while the game is running. You can delete things. You can find if it has a specific value inside of the array. There is a lot of built-in functionality to arrays that make, make it so that if you have a list of anything, you'll want to create an array, then you can use that while the game is running and alter it and change it, and it's just fantastic. Arrays are, they're, they're a non-primitive data type, but they are so essential to programming that you will find yourself using them all over the place. But that's all I want to cover right now. Um, these are the data types. They are more head knowledge than anything else. Uh, you want to know what they are. You want to know their restraints and how they work so that when you begin programming, you will not make mistakes like trying to add your name to my age and get an error when the game runs, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I'll continue talking about these and we will then work on examples and exercises with these so that they will get into your brain in a way that hopefully clicks in one form or another. But that's all I've got for you in this part. So thank you for joining me, and as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. Hey there. Uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. Up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you. Thank you.